encounter semiconductors in our daily lives everywhere. They're in our phones, they're in the TV, they're in the computer. Uh, they're basically in everything at this point, uh, since we live in an era of microelectronics just about every place you can imagine, including the phone that's ringing on my hip right this moment and distracting me. It turns out that what semiconductors really are are the gates and switches and amplifiers and little doodads inside the electronics that we depend on uh, that make it more complicated than just turning things on and off. So we live in a world basically where we are much more reliant on semiconductors than we've ever uh, anticipated and they surround us just about everything we do. Everyone's talking about semiconductors right now because there's a shortage of them and the pandemic made that plain. There's cars sitting in lots waiting for the tiny little semiconductors to be installed in them that will make them work. Uh, we've sort of realized, oh my gosh, we're dependent on these things and when there's shortages, we're in a bad place. And so they've become a pressing sort of national security interest, fundamental manufacturing need, and a thing that people who probably don't think a lot about electronics have suddenly realized, oh my gosh, we need them. So on one level, semiconductors should be easy because if you were sitting on the beach uh, this summer, you were sitting on the stuff that semiconductors are made out of, silicon. It's the same stuff we make beer bottles out of. Uh, it turns out that uh, it's uh, mostly produced in China. You mine it from sandstone, you mill it, you purify it, you melt it into ingots, and it becomes slightly more expensive there, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars for wafers of the most advanced ones. But fundamentally, it's cheap stuff. So there's not shortages of the raw materials. It's really the factories, the fabs, that make these things that are really um, expensive. You're talking a $10 billion to $15 billion investment for a new one, and it's unbelievably complicated. It, it is the most complicated thing that's done in manufacturing right now. You're basically using photographic processes to imprint these nanometer scale networks of electronic circuits on these wafers of silicon and it's unbelievably sensitive to in interference and you just got to spend a lot of money to do it right especially to make the most advanced ones which are the ones we want so on august 9th uh, president biden signed the new chip bill which is uh, creating helpful incentives for producing uh, Semiconductors in America Act, uh, which is a hell of an acronym, isn't it? What it does is it gives about uh, $50 billion to manufacturers in the United States of semiconductors, which is important because we make a lot less of them than we used to. In 1990, the U.S. produced about 40% of all the semiconductors in the world. Now it's, you know, don't quote me exactly on the number, but we're talking 5%, much less than we did in the past. And you're seeing places like Taiwan, uh, become the producer of the most complicated uh, and most costly and, and valuable semiconductors and China moving very heavily to become one of these manufacturers whereas the US manufacturers have folded away uh, you only have three major manufacturers now in the US of semiconductors one of them makes just the memory semiconductors and computers it's it's kind of the story of the US we've we've offshored uh, what were at first sort of simple technologies and then they became the complicated ones and we've given the whole thing up there's a number of reasons why we want these things made in the U.S. I mean, first, for competitive advantage in the world. We need to be the ones making these things. That's a sort of industrial policy decision. Fundamentally, there's the national security argument, like the things in our cruise missiles, the things in our tanks, the things in our most advanced weaponry are semiconductors steering them, and we need them to be made here. Uh, we can't be worried about China starting a war with Taiwan, where and that'd be the place where all the semiconductors and the weapons that we're going to be fighting the war over come from, where both would be shut down. So there's a national security argument there beyond the fundamental competitiveness argument that's made uh, to justify the bills like the CHIPS Act.